Hey everybody, it's Mike with Plus 8 Precision. I guess this is a continuation of the uh, unboxing and install video I planned on doing on this Vevvar power feed unit I purchased off of eBay. I want I, I don't. I'll, I'll post the initial the price I paid for it. It was like 126 and some change or something, but it was a pretty good deal. Um, the only problem I have is what I will show you now. So. What started out as an installation video quickly turned into a lot more complicated than uh, I've seen some of these being installed on their mills. First of all, I have a Condia mill, so I don't have a bridge port. Um, it's dirty, dirty, dirty right now because I've been busy as heck, which is one of the reasons why I bought this because, you know, your arm gets tired after cranking and cranking. So... Let me start taking some of this apart and uh, show you the things I had to do in order to make it fit. And a couple other things. So let's get started taking some things apart. Uh, it's, I guess to, to be fair, it's not even completely finished, installed yet because if you can see how close we are to the handle of my mill, hitting the housing um, I can't I was gonna take this off on the lathe this this bushing here but if I did that I wouldn't be able to use the handle because my handles I assume are bigger than the bridge port so it kinda has to stay as is consequently the nut is not thread all the way on there enough to lock it down so I gotta either use some Loctite or uh, I don't know if this is hard. Drill and put a small, maybe a soft, shearable pin in there. But just wanted to show you that as an initial problem. So, keyway. Very large. This is plastic. Threads are different than what came on the mill, so don't get rid of that. At least if you got a Condia mill. Paper shims. Size difference here between that and this. Um, Again, I was busy at the time trying to get this on. It took longer than I wanted it to, so paper works good enough for what it does. I don't use this anyhow. I have a DRO, but I just wanted to show you that. Uh, I don't remember what the size difference was, but there's several layers of paper in there. I know it's a professional fix. Small key. That's what engages the handle. This seems to be fairly robustly made. Um, I added grease in there. It looks like it all settled to the bottom. If you can take a look at that keyway, those of you guys with a bridge port, is that the size of the keyway on a bridge port? It's like an eighth of an inch. Here's a key I made because I didn't want to cut up the Condia key that was on my... You can see the size difference. That was a problem. So I'm not going to take this key out, but I guess I'll bring you in closer. So give me a second here. You can see I had to make like a step key that fitted into the handle portion of my lead screw. And um, otherwise, you know, I would have just had to send this back. And I didn't really want to send it back. I wanted to use it. So 
you know, it took a, not, not long, just a, a little bit of time to go ahead and make that key, but you have to stop and put everything back together in order to use it. You know, or you have to take it apart enough where pieces aren't falling off and use the handle on the other side of the table. But anyhow, you know, that's, I, those are the things I wanted to show you. Functionally, the unit works pretty well. Um, I'm, I have, on my, on my DRO, I actually have, uh, um, feed speeds and either metric or English. This will run anywhere, you know, um, 960 millimeters a minute, according to the DRO in rapid, and you can adjust it with the knob. It's not, you know. You're never going to be exactly on any number. You might have to play with this throughout using it because whenever you move this handle, it seems like it catches, even though I don't see it moving, but it, it, it does. Um, as all the other ones, this is a rapid button. Um, because everything is so close on mine, I have to be more careful that my hand is definitely on this. I can't reach over here and do this or my hand will get smacked by the lever or the crank. Um, but it does work. Uh, I would recommend it. it. My unit is, other than the problems I had installing it, you know, it works good. It's pretty strong. It plows through with a face mill. Um, and I've been using it for at least five weeks. But there were a couple other issues. I'll show you those. And over here what we're looking at is we're looking at the... Um, the limit switch that controls the feed and, and you can set you know your adjustment on your table uh, nuts that were provided and and they're made out of plastic they seem strong enough I guess and you know as long as everything functions and these do so far so but this here you know this is just a little cover to protect it from coolant and whatever and but the thing is is again I don't have a bridge port and this was not recommended or at least my machine was not on the the list of machines that this was recommended for so I assumed some liability and responsibility for the problems and workarounds that I've I've had to do but this bracket here I had to open up the holes drill them out and then file them a little bit so that way I could use this um, not a big deal again but it's it's another step so the first couple weeks when I needed this when I had a lot of work um, I didn't even have this on there so you can run it without it. I have it on there now. I still really haven't used it just because I'm always here. I'm always attending this. I do have another machine that I can run, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm usually right at this mill. That's where most of my work takes place. So there's another issue for you. Not a, not a you know, showstopper, but nevertheless, it's a problem. Some guys might not want to deal with this. I'm just trying to be transparent with what I found and what I had to do to get it installed. And finally, I will show you the last thing. The last problem, which almost did make me send it back, um, and nowhere in the description of this item or in the brochure style instructions does it say anything about the electrical other than that it's a 110 volt unit doesn't specify amps I don't believe if it's in there somewhere I apologize uh, I will post that if I do find it in the video because at this moment right now I can't remember it showing amps out here in the garage I have a GFCI uh, plug that's closest to this unit it's a 15 amp plug you'd think it'd be bigger in the garage but shame on my builder it's 15 amps well when you plug it in, it trips instantly. You don't even have to turn anything on. It just trips the brake, the GFCI. I don't know why. Electrician folks tell me why. I don't know why. And again, I was in a hurry, so I, I, I couldn't fart around with it. I did try to use one of those adapters where you can bypass the ground. I thought maybe there was some wire in there that was kind of shorted out, but 
it's still it's still tripped instantly. As soon as you plug it in, bam, it trips. So something is going on in there. I contacted the seller. They told me to try to find a repair shop, and they'll pay for it. Who's got time for that, right? So my workaround for that is this. It's an extension cord to a 30-amp non-GFCI protected outlet. And that's what I've been using since. I haven't had any issues. Like I said, it works good. I would recommend it based on that. But just be aware that you might have to take some steps in order to get it installed on your mill. And if you're not scared of that, then, you know, have at it. It's a good deal. I will buy another one and put it on the Y and possibly on the knee. You know, I know what to expect now. I can disassemble those and see what's going on with the key, with the shaft, everything. Oh, yes. I had to run a reamer through here to open it up to fit on the shaft. And my shaft is a two-piece. There's like a cup link just on the other side of the the bearing plate. So I could separate this. I put it in the lathe and just polished it up. There was some little boogers and stuff on there. Um, so I polished that up so everything would fit. But, yeah, this was a 16 mil reamer. I believe a 5.8. So it was a 16 millimeter. It was a 16 millimeter reamer I ran through there. And, uh, you know, this is not brass. This is bronze or some kind of Amco bronze. It's pretty tough. Took a lot to get that reamer in there and back out. But that was another thing that I had to do. So, again, none of it is beyond your capabilities. Um, save yourself some bucks. You want to spend the big money, you still might have issues, right? So this being the cost of $126 and some change pretty much fits in anybody's budget. And it adds a great deal of versatility to the mill. So I don't know what else to tell you. If you got any questions, leave them in the comment section. Um, I will try to answer the best of my ability. But, you know, uh, I'll try, continue to try to post videos as often as I can. But currently I have quite a bit of work. Just right now I don't have a whole lot going on. I, I do have work, but uh, I haven't started on it yet. So I figured I would take this time to document this out. I've been waiting to do this for a while. But questions and comments... Ask them freely. Um, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Help me uh, grow the channel. The channel has been at a very slow pace. But hopefully these types of videos, these uh, you know, this isn't for me an unboxing and a review. It's more along the lines of how to get it on your mill and whatever. But thanks for watching. Enjoy the video. Enjoy all my videos. Um, it's Mike from Plus 8 Precision.